you know, talk to so many high school athletes that are being recruited and they keep coming back to the name and image and likeness that you just referenced being in LA now, what, what is that going to be like? And, and how do you anticipate that being organized and managed? You know, I anticipate UCLA being at the forefront of that because I, I'm a proponent of name, image, and likeness. Now, I do think we need to tweak it and make sure that it works in the model that we have. We need to modernize our model. Uh, but, but we're in the education business. You know, what better way to educate student athletes on their brand, on um, their value, on capitalizing on opportunities than to do it while you're in college before you become professional in whatever it is you're going to do? So to me, I look at it as an opportunity to educate and develop and help our young people instead of something that we just, we just fight in against. We just need to modernize, in my opinion. That's part of the education model. That's what we do. That's how we serve. And so to me, being in LA, being at UCLA, it's going to be a great opportunity to really help our young people grow and learn good and bad mistakes and those kind of things as far as how they look at name, image, and likeness. You talk about brand and, and value, and I, I would love to know, you, you mentioned kind of your path. You're obviously from North Carolina. You played hoops at UNC Wilmington and, you know, worked in the Big Ten and the ACC. What has been your perception of the Pac-12 up to this point? I'm sure it's changed now that you've gotten to know UCLA a little bit better over the last month or so, but what, what was your perception of the Pac-12? Winning championships. Uh, I, I know the Pac-12 probably leads all the, the Power Five conferences in championships, I imagine. I just know that the level across the board of broad-based excellence in the Pac-12 sports has been uh, the best in the country. So that's the first thing I think about is winning uh, across the board, not just this sport or that sport, but real consistent uh, top 10 type programs across the board in the Pac-12. Uh, so that's the first thing that comes to mind. Also, high academic, you know, you're in areas, whether it's Silicon Valley, whether it's LA, uh, you're in markets that really have high-level academic uh, professors, faculty, uh, research knowledge. So I think Pac-12, high academic, that's the first, the second thing really that comes to my mind. So, uh, and that's what I love about UCLA. The, the opportunity to be at an institution that's high academic, high athletic, elite, you just don't have many of those opportunities in those places. And UCLA is one of them. So I'm excited to join the, the Bruin family. Remember when uh, Chip Kelly got hired and he talked exactly about that of like, we're not going to have issues. You know, our kids are going to go to school. They're going to play sports. And when you're that organized, you could do great things. When you, when you look at not only the players there now, but you go back in time, you know, it's, it's, there's so many iconic names. I mean, a laundry list of not just change, change makers in sport, but in society. Like how excited do you get about the palette that you're going to have when you walk on campus and the amount of change the kids will think they can have once they put on that jersey? I mean, just to think of some of the people that have come through UCLA, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, Jackie Robinson, I mean, John Wooden, you just, they're legends, they're, they're barrier breakers, they're, they're phenomenal uh, leaders that have gone on to do things in the world, not just UCLA or sports, but the world. You know, to be a part of that, it's just special. You know, you just don't get those kind of opportunities. So I pinch myself because I'm going to have the opportunity to contribute and to steward that legacy, build on that foundation and that history. And how do we move it forward into the future? You know, that's, that's going to be the charge. And I'm excited about that, but you know, it's, it's amazing when you think about all the people that have come through UCLA, Sue Inquist, you know, coach Inquist at softball. I mean, I remember being a young guy at Michigan state watching a documentary. It was probably 2002 or 2003. Uh, outside the white lines and it was about her softball program and their quest for a national championship and just I mean excellence being elite that's it's truly remarkable and I'm just excited to be a part of it. How much time or ha have you had any time yet to to get to know any of your head coaches you obviously have some some phenomenal coaches in Westwood we're all big fans of a lot of them but what what is that process like for you right now? Yeah, you know, I've been measured. I haven't been able to uh, just because I'm still doing two jobs and I want to do things the right way at BC. So I've kind of had this rhythm where I try to call a head coach once every two days. So I've talked to maybe four or five head coaches. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to all of them, obviously. But, you know, with just time and just how everything has occurred and went down, 
you know, you just don't have enough hours in the day to, 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 to call everybody. And then, oh, by the way, you've got to call um, your coaches at BC and, and different things. So uh, I haven't been able to. I've talked to a few of them, and they've, they've been positive conversations. Everyone's excited, just like I'm excited. I'm looking forward to working with them uh, from what I understand and what I have researched with our head coaches. Uh, very talented, win, winning a lot, integrity. I mean, so I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to come into an environment where you've got that kind of talent from a head coach perspective that gets it and truly wants to be elite or already are. So you were among this elite conference. You are for a couple more days here. Take me inside like the football world, right? Like what are those conversations like that you've had on one side of the country? Now here we are in the Pac-12. We've, everybody's seemingly coming back to campus in the near future. What are your thoughts around the start of football season? And I know Bruin fans are hoping they could see you at the Rose Bowl when this thing kicks off. Yes, I, I'm looking forward to diving in on the Pac-12 and the UCLA conversations. I, I haven't been privy to any yet, uh, but uh, that's one of the first things that I'm going to get caught up to speed on where those conversations lie. I've been a part of the ACC conversations, and, and they've been positive. You know, one of the, I was on my last ACC athletic director call last week, and kind of my parting words that I, that I shared with them was, it's been remarkable to see how during a crisis, how that group of athletic directors has come together and shared, this is what we're thinking as far as return to practice. These are protocols we're thinking returning to work just for our staff. And it, just the amount of sharing and communication, weekly you know, calls two or three times a week, it's been encouraging uh, from my perspective, just our business, helping one another, looking at things a different way, sharing perspectives, because everybody comes at it from a different perspective all to help our students get back on campus and educate and do what we do in a healthy and safe manner. It's, it's been cool to see everybody come together. We all compete. We all want to win. But there are moments sometimes where you really got to lock arms and come together and say, hey, you know, how best can we move forward as a conference in the betterment of the whole? And I've been encouraged by the ACC seeing that. And I'm sure that the Pac-12 athletic directors and administrators are are on that same track. But that's been really encouraging and promising to see. Yeah, that, I, it's good to hear you say that because I think that has been a theme. We've seen that not, you know, just across, I think, even the commissioners to the athletic directors to even the research departments. Uh, everybody's sharing information and coming together, which has been cool. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll let you go soon. But I, it kind of just occurred to me, all of this happened virtually. And I know you've spent the bulk of your time, as we were saying, in the Midwest and the East Coast. Have you actually physically been to Westwood? Like, have you been on campus? I have not been to Westwood. I've not been on campus before. Uh, I've been to LA a few times uh, as a fundraiser at Michigan State and Ohio State. I would go to Orange County a lot, um, but I haven't spent much time in LA at all. So haven't been to campus, uh, excited about coming to campus, been to the Rose Bowl one time. So I've been to the Rose Bowl more times than I've been to campus. <laughs> there is no like Zoom call or video tour or anything that could do justice to what that campus is and how special it truly is. So I, I mean, I wish I could be there for the first time you take your step, first step on it because it's just there's something truly, truly special about it. And my last piece of advice for you, um, one of the first things you got to do once everything opens back up and we're allowed to hang out again, traffic. go to Yogi's house. Well, traffic, yes, that's... <laughs> Number one. Number two is fight that traffic and go over to Yogi's house for dinner okay. and have him take you, have him take you all the spots around Venice beach. Cause that's, that's like, if you really want to know the inside of LA, that's Yogi's your guy. <laughs> that's it. Yogi, guess who's coming to dinner, brother. Hey, let, bring the kids. So all the kids can hang. We'll do our thing. I got yeah. you, man. We'll, we'll got it. We'll tell Pat Sean to fly down. We can have, we just have a party here in Venice. Tell PC got to it. come on down and PC can buy. Don't even worry about you. 100%. <laughs> Dedicated PC can buy, man. <laughs> Done. Done. Uh, Martin, you're awesome. We can't thank you enough for making some time. Again, we know how busy your schedule is and we appreciate um, this conversation and we can't wait to, to get to know you more uh, as the months unfold. But best of luck wrapping everything up in Chestnut Hill. I know I'd speak as a BC grad that a lot of people are really going to miss you and, and thank you for everything that you did there over the last three years. And we're excited to have you in the Pac-12. I'm excited to get to know both of you and I'm excited about coming into Pac-12 and We'll be talking to you Zoom soon, hopefully not Zoom in the fall, and you can actually come to a practice and we can meet that way. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Martin, thanks so much. Have a good rest of your day. All right. Thanks for having me.